All right. Well, we're a little after five o'clock now, so we'll go ahead and get started. And in case you are arriving a little late or know someone that's arriving later today, we are recording this session, so we can go ahead and share information out afterwards, so they won't have missed anything that we shared here today. So to jump in, I want to welcome everyone here to the first RC Intros event featuring a panel of current RC students. My name is Logan Corey, and I'm the Director of RC Admissions and Recruitment, uh, and I'm excited for the opportunity to connect with you about the residential college during this more distance time. I'm also a proud alumna of the RC and the UM College of Literature, Science and the Arts, Arts excuse me, and want to congratulate all of you who have received your accepted admissions to un the University of Michigan and welcome you into a community of Michigan Wolverines. As a reminder, this event is being recorded and will be available on our website and YouTube pages in the coming days. As an attendee of this event, you will not have access to your camera or microphone, but are encouraged to write any questions you have about the RC for our panelists here in the Q&A. So anytime throughout the presentation, if you have a question, definitely drop it in there and we'll get to that throughout our presentation today. To start, I'm going to share a brief overview about the RC, then I'll ask our student panelists to introduce themselves and we can kick off the Q&A portion. So let me go ahead and share my screen. So here you'll be seeing a drawing image of East Quad, and then we'll jump in. So to kick things off, I thought it might be helpful to get a better sense of where the RC is physically loaded, located on campus. When we're here in person, the RC is located in East Quad, which is just a short walk from the Diag, Angel Hall, and a lot of those key components of courses right there on central campus. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, we are much more virtual right now. So at this point, the RC is wherever you are. We're really trying to find a way to stay connected to everyone. But we wanted to share a little bit about you both for in-person and virtual and how things are going right now. So thinking about the RC in terms of size, the RC is just a small slice of the entire University of Michigan population. Now all RC students are also LSA students, so they're part of that larger population, the incoming cohort has access to all those majors, those minors, those research opportunities, those resources, but then they're also part of the smaller community of RC peers, where they share some educational philosophies and values, but maybe not the exact same major goals or career paths. There's a lot that goes into the RC, so a lot of different factors, a lot of components, but I want to focus on a few key parts of the RC and dive a little bit deeper into those with some of our Q&As with our students too. So within the RC, we have over 50 faculty members that teach our courses, and they range widely in topics from humanities, social sciences, social justice, and several of those faculty members also happen to be our advisors. So that means that those instructors are able to uh, connect with our students on a deeper level by going to office hours in the building when we're in person or by finding ways to connect with them virtually with virtual office hours right now as well. Um, our RC courses are very unique in the fact that they are so small. So RC courses range from about 9 to 20 students. So that means you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one connection with your instructor in RC courses and they also get to know you very well. So let's say you're in an RC course and it's time for a letter of recommendation, maybe for an internship. Approaching an RC instructor means that they will have gotten to know you on a better level than if you were in a large lecture hall. So you have some of those resources right away built in. The RC also does quite a bit of community outreach. Uh, social activism and social justice has been one of the pillars of the RC since our founding in 1967. So it's no surprise that our community outreach programs have continued to grow. Several of these combine RC language interests, but some of them are focused directly in the community with things like Semester in Detroit or the Prison Creative Arts Project. These aren't a requirement for RC students, they're just very common areas where RC students get involved. Now I did mention that the RC is typically in East Quad. So when we're in East Quad, we have a lot of great resources right at our fingertips, like the last dark room existing on campus for photography, a theater, an art gallery, a lot of those resources that are really unique and give a lot of the charm to the RC. So keeping those in mind, that's our plan. That's where we'd like to be in the fall. Uh, but we also have found ways to still connect to a lot of those in this virtual format. So I just talked to a student the other day who's taking a drama course, but is taking it virtually. So still being able to keep that spirit alive, even if not in our beloved Keene Theater. And I also want to share a little bit of the RC community and student life. So the community is really made up of all the staff, the students, the faculty, alumni, all of us all together, really working towards some shared goals. 
Uh, but RC students have a lot of unique ways that they get involved from things like our forums, which are clubs created by RC students for RC students. So in the photo here, there's RC Clay Club and Spoon Club, and those clubs range a lot in topics, everything from eco forum to health and wellness to diversity in politics. We also have a literary journal and our own mentorship program. And I'll touch a little bit on RC academic requirements. Since the RC is part of LSA, RC students first need to complete their LSA requirements, those that are required in order to graduate from the College of Literature, Science, and the Arts. Conveniently, many of the RC requirements also overlap with LSA requirements. So this means you're able to fulfill two requirements at once with one course, which ultimately saves you time and money, and also ensures you're able to complete those goals like a double major, or studying abroad, or adding a double minor. Probably the most well-known RC requirement is our language program. So our language program offers five languages in a semi-immersion intensive style. So that's Spanish, French, Russian, German, and Japanese. Now for these courses, RC students work to master all the components to really learning the language. And at the end of that program, take a proficiency exam. Once you pass that exam, that's posted officially on your transcript. I'm proficient in whatever language you learned. So that's something great for internship for future careers to have a record of that skill that you've worked on. And as you'll see noted, uh, this actually fulfills the LSA requirement for language in one additional course. That's where we're at 20 credits for the RC. And conveniently again, the RC actually is able to help students complete this requirement in half the time it typically takes their LSA peers. Now, if you're really interested in a language I didn't mention, don't worry, that doesn't mean that you can't join the RC. We have RC students that come in with uh, full experience being fluent in a second language. Maybe it was a language they already spoke at home. And we also have students that come in with passion for a language we don't teach, but they're able to meet that requirement to our credit equivalency. So they would take 20 credits of that language in LSA. The next RC requirement is the first year writing seminar. This is a pretty common requirement at a lot of colleges and universities meant to assess your writing skill level when you first come in, where do you need to improve, where are your strengths. For the RC courses, we max these at 15 students. So again, a lot of that one-on-one -on -one attention with your instructor, and they range quite a bit in topics. So you're not having all the RC students learning the exact same course, you're interacting with different instructors in different topic areas as well. The art practicum is a requirement that also fulfills LSA's creative expression. Now this is a great course to build into your schedule, something you really enjoyed in high school maybe, but you know you're not going to major in. So maybe you're passionate about music, so you take a chamber music course. Or maybe you've always wanted to try darkroom photography, but never had the resources or the chance. This is a great opportunity to try that as well. The final academic requirement is for RC courses. So what this means is beyond art practicum, the language courses and your first year writing seminar take four additional RC courses. Those courses can be any topic, they can be any number of credits, and you can take them in any semester from your first to your final one. So you can think of this as a way to stay connected with smaller courses while also helping to complete your LSA distribution or your major and minor requirements. So for example, you might need a humanities course for your major or a humanities course for your LSA distribution. By taking one in the RC, you complete the, one of the RC4 course requirements and you complete that humanities requirement at the same time. And it's also a good balance in your schedule knowing for sure you have that smaller course, you likely already know the instructor, and you're staying connected to your community. The final RC requirement is non-academic. It's our residential requirement. So typically, I'll say, uh, RC students are expected to live on campus in East Quad with the RC community for their first two years. Due to those COVID-19 restrictions that I mentioned, we've become much more flexible on this requirement. And while we still don't know for sure how things are going to be for the fall, we want to stay in good communication about this. So if you have any particular concerns, reach out to me directly and I'll have that conversation with you. But also keep an eye on our website. Keep an eye on the UMICH housing website. We'll share more information as soon as we learn more. And the final piece I want to touch on is the full RC admission cycle. So most of you here today have likely already completed your Common App and your Coalition App or uh, reaching out and filling out the Join the RC form on the website saying, you know, I'm interested, I'd like to join the RC. So if you did that step, you received an email from me asking to confirm your interest. Now many of you have also completed that step. 
Now, this step is non-binding. It does not commit you to Michigan. It simply says, if I choose to come to Michigan, I'd like to be considered for the RC. We won't actually begin giving away any spots in the RC incoming class until after March 1st. At that point, if you've said, you know, yes, I am interested, I would like to join the RC, and you've paid your U of M enrollment deposit, you can officially secure a spot in the incoming class. So a common question we get right now is, is the RC starting to fill up? Have you reached capacity? And we haven't begun to give away any of those spots yet. So you're completely fine to confirm your interest, even if you're still considering other programs or other universities. Now, after March 1st, we may start to fill up quicker. It varies a lot year by year, but around mid-April is when we tend to go to a wait list, if that's the way we're going. We're also very transparent about the admissions process. So if you have any concerns, reach out to me directly and I'll have a conversation with you about where your standing is, what you can expect in the coming weeks. So I mentioned a couple times, feel free to reach out to me. This is my email and my phone number. Either one is completely fine. Uh, feel free just to share any concerns or questions on your mind. I know the admissions process can be very stressful. I know it can be very complicated and this is all the time, even without COVID-19 on top of everything. So definitely feel free to reach out. And I also want to mention we have two other RC intro events scheduled right now, one with our faculty, one with our alumni. So just keep an eye out to register for those as well. So I'll stop my share and I'll welcome everybody back. And before we jump in and introduce our panelists, I have one quick poll I wanted to share. Okay. So this is a quick poll just to see where you are zooming in from today. Since we're all all over right now, I'm just curious to see where you're calling in from. So we'll give just a couple more minutes for everyone to respond. Okay, a lot of Michigan and not in Ann Arbor. And I'll share those results. So a little bit all over the place, which is great. That's one of the big benefits right now of having things in more of a virtual environment. We're able to connect in this way where it might be more challenging, especially in one of the snowy days like we're having right now in Ann Arbor. So I'd like to welcome all of our student panelists to turn on their cameras so we can get to know them a little bit better. So we're gonna do some quick introductions. I'll jump into some questions, then I'd love to start answering more of the questions you've shared in the Q&A. So like I said before, feel free to keep adding those as things come up and we'll start answering those shortly. So first, um, we'll go in alphabetical order and I'd like all the panelists to introduce themselves, uh, share your name, your pronouns if you'd like to share, your hometown, your academic year, major minor, and your RC or LSA language. All right, I'll begin. Um, my name's Hayden, I am uh, a junior uh, in the RC. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, I am originally from Traverse City, Michigan. So for any of you that are also in Michigan, you know where that is. Um, uh, my major is uh, Romance Languages and Literatures in addition to International Studies. I'm minoring in translation, so a lot of language and culture. Um, my RC language was French, but I've done a few activities with Spanish. And just an additional side note, I'm a, one of the admissions assistants in the RC admissions, off, RC admissions, admission, admissions office um, so if you have any interaction via email, um, that may be with me or one of my other um, colleagues. Okay, uh, my name is Katie. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am a junior in the RC, majoring in gender and health with a minor in music. Um, I did the intensive Spanish curriculum in the RC in my freshman year. Okay, hi, I'm Layla. I am a freshman in the RC, so I was where you were very recently. Um, I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I am from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I am mostly undecided for my major and minor, um, but what I'm considering the social theory and practice major in the RC, um, and I'm doing the intensive Spanish program. 
Uh, my name is Lucia. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I'm from Novi, Michigan, which is also like 30 minutes from Ann Arbor. Um, I am a sophomore. I still don't know my major yet, so I got to figure that out this semester. Um, and my language was Chinese, so I actually didn't take it through LSA. I mean, through RC. Sorry. Yeah, know what I mean. Hi, my name is Pin Yi. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. I'm from Taipei, Taiwan, but I've been living in California for the past eight years. Um, I'm a first year and I'm hoping to major in biohealth and society and my RC language is Spanish. All right, thank you everybody. So to kick things off, I have a question for everyone. So feel free to jump in if you'd like to share or you can move on to the next one. Uh, my first one is, either how did you hear about the RC or why did you choose to join the RC? I can go first. Um, so I heard about the RC because of my sister actually. So she applied to the residential college at Michigan. She didn't end up going. Um, and the reason I chose the RC is because I've known for a very long time that I wanted a small school basically but I also knew that I wanted to go to Michigan. And obviously those, you know, in my mind, I was like, well, Michigan's a big school. So like, I can't really get what I want. But then with the RC, I kind of could because I know that I liked those like small classrooms, like getting like close with my professors and other students and like more office hours and help opportunity in a smaller community. And so the fact like I was excited to be able to get that at Michigan. So that's why I did the RC. I can sort of respond to that too. Um, I heard about it through a friend in high school um, and I knew of Michigan and I was a, like a Michigan kid. If you're from Michigan or the area, you know there's like Michigan or state families. Um, so I knew about Michigan, my sister went here. Um, and when I heard about the RC, I was like, oh, I want something more immersive, specifically with language as a language lover. And um, I wanted to you know, do French. So um, once I heard about the RC, I felt like it was a really good fit for um, to have sort of that immersive environment um, in addition to like still being home. So yeah. Um, being from Alabama, I was probably one of the only Michigan fans growing up. Um, my dad went here, grew up in Detroit. Um, so I was a Michigan fan from birth basically and uh, I did an official tour of the school in my junior year of high school. And I thought that I knew everything about Michigan because I'd had this tour like dozens of times um, from my dad, but turns out I didn't know everything because I found out about the RC that day from Logan. <laughs> and um, my mom and I raided her office and, you know, picked her brain about RC stuff. And uh, I fell in love. I went to a high school with uh, 300 people total. Michigan was the biggest school that I applied to. So the RC was just like the best of both worlds for me because I'm pre-health. I do a lot of STEM work, but I love the liberal arts and I loved learning Spanish. So. Um, with me, I really don't remember where I heard it first from because I, I don't know. Um, basically half of my school every year goes to Michigan. So there's obviously like a lot of um, programs there. Uh, people who like know um, about Michigan programs. Um, for me, one of the ma main motivating factors was the fact that uh, it was a smaller community because at first I didn't actually want to go to Michigan. I wanted to go to um, a much smaller school. Um, so for me, it was because I heard about the RC and I'm like, oh my God, I can actually like know people instead of just being like a face in a crowd and never knowing my professor. Like I didn't want that to happen. Um, especially since like when I was in high school, I had really small classes. So I, I wanted to like stay with that path. Um, and also one of the things too was I really wanted to take art classes and RC has a lot of art classes that you can take, which is really nice too. For me, I actually heard about the RC in the Common App application, um, and I'm very glad I joined. Um, I came from a very small school, and so I was looking for, especially in such a big school like Michigan, a small tight-knit community that I was comfortable in. And also I knew that I wanted to take Spanish classes in college and the intensive program seemed like a right fit. 
Thank you all. We've started to get a lot of questions about the RC language program. So just kind of overall, what is that like for the credit experience? And also, if you have tested out of it, what was that like? What other courses did you have to take or not have to take? And uh, would you say the RC is only for people who want to do languages? So whoever wants to start can start with that one and we can kind of popcorn around again as well. I can start with that one just because I may have caused some confusion by mentioning my love for language. Um, no, the RC is not all about language. Um, that's only one part of the RC um, that really appealed to me when I was applying. Um, so in terms of languages, like Logan said, there are five um, ones that are offered in an intense format, meaning you'll have um, a lot of instruction in that, but also have additional extracurricular, not extracurricular, but like, yeah, extracurricular activities as in like lunches or coffee hours. Um, so that's like the language component. Um, and for me, when I took, when you take, when you go to orientation, you'll take a placement test and then they'll give you results. And then the RC will actually, um, like the, the faculty in that language will evaluate your results and look at it to make sure you're in the right sort of, um, placement for either like intensive one or intensive two, which are the two different levels. Um, and in my case, I tested in, um, into a higher level, but my but the French faculty uh, head didn't really know where to put me. So she let me take the proficiency test, which is what you take at the end of the language um, language process um, before you take your readings course. And um, that just gave her a better idea of where I should go. And then from there, I got to decide if I wanted to be in, in intensive two, an accelerated review course, or if I wanted to move on to the readings course. So I hope that sort of clears things up. Um, so I personally actually skipped out of the uh, language requirement. Um, so I, I, I got out of it because I met um, what LSA considers to be native language proficiency in the um, during like the language test for Chinese. So that meant um, that also meets the RC requirement for it. So I don't have to take any other like extra language classes. Although I do know that if you like, I'm pretty sure if you test into like a different language, but you don't meet like the native whatever proficiency thing, um, you just have to take to the same level that you would if you were in the RC, um, if it was an RC language, which is one past like the normal like four year, uh, two year thing, right? normal requirement is um but yeah and then also I, i'm also highly considering taking russian just just purely because i want to learn russian through the rc but yeah thank you all so a couple questions that have come up kind of related to what you shared too is can I learn multiple languages and a couple of you have shared you've done that you're doing that so that's completely possible. And those multiple languages can be in the RC they can be in LSA you can kind of form a mixture of those so you're not restricted just to RC languages. And kind of another question we got a little bit about being restricted to things is uh, RC courses so are all your courses in the RC are they across other departments. Uh, would anyone like to respond to that what your typical course load looks like. Yeah, I can um, talk about that. So for me, what I've done for this semester and last semester, because that's all I've been here for, is I would say I had, obviously I've had my intensive language program, so that was in the RC, and I had my first year writing course last semester, which was also in the RC, which I loved, but okay, that's another story. Um, but so what I've usually, what I've been doing sort of is like two RC classes, so like Spanish is like one of the two but it's like eight credits so it's like you know more so I've been doing like my language another like RC specific course and then like an LSA course like right now I'm in like a statistics class like just you know like one of the big like lecture hall statistics classes and so I think you know it's really easy to find the balance that you like you know if you want to take all RC classes awesome go for it if you want to take mostly LSA and just your language awesome but like I think having that balance of you know like big college classes and the RC specific like smaller community classes has been really great and you can kind of like mix and match however you want to. Yeah, um, I agree with Layla. I have been taking um, both RC like language classes and the first year writing seminar last, um, last semester along with some larger LSA classes. 
And I agree with Layla that I think it's a good idea to get a balance of both because then you can really see the difference um, in between the class sizes and how um, interactive each class is. I've noticed some questions coming in asking about being an LSA major while you're in the RC or asking if the four additional RC courses, that requirement prevents you from being an LSA major. So just to recap, for anyone that's pursuing an LSA major, can you just raise your hand real quick? So undecided and the majority of the students on the call. So it's pretty common to be an LSA major in the RC. The majority of our students are LSA majors and several of them do double majors. So for everyone that was doing a double major, can you raise your hand too? Okay, so it's still possible. Uh, Hayden, do you wanna talk about being a double major a little bit? Yeah, so um, being a double major is definitely possible within the RC. Um, it just depends on the, the uh, disciplines that you're going to do together. In my case, I chose uh, Romance Languages and Literatures and International Studies, and those, tend, uh, those both have a focus on um, culture and language. So um, they work well together. Um, coincidentally, doing both of them only adds, I think, five extra courses to what I would have done for just one of the majors, um, which in context is not a lot. Um, so it just depends on what you're going to mix. If you're going to do, say, like history, I have a friend that's doing um, CS and, or which, computer science and philosophy. Um, so you would be hard pressed to find a class that would count for both of those. So if you're doing, uh, say you're doing those two, dis those two disciplines, it might be harder to find things that cross over. And then those, um, in addition to RC courses, might put a lot of stress on you. But um, if you're doing if you're doing two uh, majors that are sort of like in the same plane, um, then you'll be able to cross over with a lot of courses. Um, if you're doing two majors, then um, most of the time, uh, or no, if you're doing two majors, um, LSA distribution and stuff like that is also easy to figure out. So that's another topic though, but um, it's doable. It's very doable. Yeah, I was going to say, so um, I'm not definitively a double major, but I have been like bouncing around in majors. So like, I, I don't know, God knows what I'm going to do. Um, but so basically, I've taken like enough RC classes that I've already been able to fulfill the majority of my distribution, which is nice. So then like after this point, I can just mostly just take my major classes. Um, and also, I've already met, I think, all of the RC requirements because I've taken all four classes. Yeah, like so the, like all the class requirements, I've met those. And so it's really easy to meet like the distribution through RC. Like I see like some of you guys are worried about like taking a step, picking a STEM major and still being in the RC. But if you're in LSA, you still have distribution requirements, which include like the upper level writing, um, social sciences, like all that stuff, which you could definitely take through the RC. And you also need the creative expressions class too. And um, the RC has some pretty good art classes. Kind of building off that too, we had those questions about STEM majors. So would anyone like to talk a little bit about majoring in something that's not, we often hear the typical RC major, which isn't actually accurate, be something in the arts. It's pretty broad for the RC. We see a lot of social sciences. We're seeing a growing number in STEM. So would anybody like to respond to STEM majoring experience in the RC? Okay, so I'm not like a STEM major, I'm a gender and health major, which is in the women's and gender studies department, but I am pre-health, so I've taken a lot of classes that pre-med students take, like, um, I did the entire intro bio, um, like, track in my freshman year while I was doing the intensive Spanish curriculum. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't, like, a little hard, like, yeah, but I was actually grateful for the Spanish because the way it's scheduled, it's um, basically every day you have lecture, a one hour lecture in the morning, then a break to eat lunch. It's like a lunch hour when you're talking in Spanish with your professors and the other students. And then there's um, a one hour discussion after that, and then you're done. And that's like four days out of the week. And it sounds like a lot, but I actually started to see it as a break from my science classes and it was becoming kind of like an 
an outlet for me and I was getting like, really good at it. So it gave me a lot of like gratification and just like, you know, the, um, the sort of not distraction, but <laughs> that I needed from my uh, science courses, but and talked with an advisor the rc advisors like this is literally their job to help you with this stuff so they're there for you and they'll help you plan it all out yeah i think it's a common misconception that you can't both be an rc student and a stem student but if anything i think my um, rc classes complement my stem classes for example, my writing seminar last semester was about um, the social, political, ethical implications of health. And in my bio um, class that semester, we were learning about how vaccines work. And after learning that, just in the context of the time that we're living in right now, I started to think about, well, what um, communities in our society would be disproportionately affected by the distribution of the vaccines. And so I think through the RC classes, I'm able to extend my knowledge learned in the STEM classes. And I do agree with Katie, my Spanish classes right now are definitely a nice break from all the intense um, STEM classes. I'm seeing a lot of questions starting to come up asking about uh, restrictions or limitations you experience by being part of the RC or if you feel isolated. So this can both be physically when we're on campus. So do you feel a little bit more distance from other areas of the campus or it can be more academic focus? So do you feel there's any restrictions or any challenges by being part of the RC? I actually think it's kind of the opposite because in addition to being in the RC, I'm still considered an LSA student. So I can go and ask for like any LSA advisor, like through, they have like their own advising department, but keep in mind the LSA advisors also like do what, I forgot what the number was Logan mentioned earlier, but like thousands of students, they can't keep, like they probably will talk to you and forget about you until the next time you come. And then they have to look over everything um, in your everything like in your transcript and whatnot um however on the other hand uh last year i literally would just walk downstairs and go talk to charlie and be like charlie i need help <laughs> so, so like on the other hand it's just um i i don't think there's a really like a drawback to it because i just think it adds on to the experience you would get as a normal lsa student because you get a smaller community within the bigger lsa community yeah, I totally agree um, with what Lucia said, especially because, like I said earlier, how like I'm taking a lot of like LSA classes and RC classes, you really do sort of get the best of both worlds because you get that smaller community and where you get to, you know, be closer to professors and get that help and be able to just walk downstairs and like get someone's help. But then you also have the entire, you know, the entire LSA population to get to know. And, you know, like being in the RC doesn't mean you can't do LSA clubs. I mean, you're in that, you're in LSA, you know, being in Michigan at all, like you can, you know, you can still do any club you want. You can still do all these sports. You can still do anything. So it really just, I think it just gives, if anything, gives you more opportunities. Cause like, like some of the people I've met in like my intensive, like language class, like, you know, I wouldn't have gotten that if I was not in that. Cause you kind of like bond over like, <laughs> The language and like doing the work and so I really think that if anything yeah you'll be you'll have an expanded like opportunity to meet more people and do more things because like there's a lot of things in the RC that like I'm doing that I probably never would have even like heard about if I wasn't in the RC and I'm so glad that I'm doing them now like I'm like the prison creative arts project which is I love so much but we can talk about it later but you know that there's just certain things that I think the RC opens you up to more things plus everything LSA already has. I would like to add like on the topic of like student life and socializing and everything. I have a lot of friends both in the RC and outside of the RC. And when I talk to other LSA students, engineering students, like people who aren't in a Michigan learning community like I am, um, you know, I asked them about how they started making friends in freshman year and, you know, they'd meet people at the dining hall or in class or in clubs. Um, and you know, everybody makes friends in a different way, which is great. But um, in the RC, you know, you see the same people over and over and over again, Spanish, lunch hour, more Spanish. And then, you know, 
the RC forums that you do for credit. And then there's like, you know, all the RC activities. There's always something going on at East Quad. The dining hall is literally in the building, which is like not every student has that luxury, especially in the winter. Um, and you see people all the time and you kind of, you're kind of forced to make friends in the RC, whether you want to or not. I mean, <laughs> it's also great for like, you know, more introverted people. Cause like, you know, us liberal artsy folks, like, you know, we tend to, you know, I like a lot of the RC activities cause it's more about like getting to know each other and really making, um, building those like meaningful Sorry, did I cut off? <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Internet is awful. Um, but, you know, the relationships that you make in the RC, they last because it's not like the first week of college, you meet a couple people and then you never talk again. That can happen. Um, I personally moved into a house with four other RC girls who I met on my first day of classes in freshman year, in my first year writing seminar, so. I will say as someone who's been completely remote this whole entire year, um, and as someone who's never been to the state of Michigan, I feel more part of the school in my RC classes than my larger LSA classes. And that's usually because, at least for right now, most LSA large classes, the lectures are asynchronous and pre-recorded. And professors do hold office hours, but those are generally open to whoever's in the class. And they usually, there are a lot of participants. But with the RC, every class is synchronous. And so I do have my um, times to socialize with people who are actually in Michigan, as well as um, the professors in the RC, they hold office hours by appointment. And so you have the opportunity to do a one-on-one -on -one, um, office hour, which I think is really special because you won't get that type of experience in LSA. Yeah, going off like the office hours thing, I'm sometimes I'll literally just like go to my Spanish professor's office hours and be like, I need help. Like, I feel like I'm not doing well, blah, blah. like I couldn't do that if I was in like a huge class with like a bunch of people. Like, it's so, so nice to be able to make those connections. Cause you know, it's like you get close with your professors and you're able to get that one-on-one -on -one help and just kind of like be real with them and they're real with you. And it's just like, it just feels so much more genuine to me, if that makes sense. Obviously I'm not saying that other classes aren't genuine, but I just like that opportunity to be able to like go to be one-on-one -on -one and like sometimes like a friend and I will go to office hours together and you know like lots of questions together and it's just very it's just a good experience like in a good way to sort of get any help as much help or as little help as you want it's like all up to you basically and I saw a question coming a little bit kind of thinking about that help with those instructors and kind of that different feel you'll get in RC courses too if you have a favorite RC course. So either that, or there's also a question about which language would you recommend, which is very tricky, because I know that's very subjective based on which language you've taken. So if anyone would like to give a special shout out for their own language or a favorite RC course, feel free. Um, sorry, I, okay, this, I'm going to plug the Prison Creative Arts Project right now. So basically, the Prison Creative Arts Project is, um, so it's run, well, okay, I was I don't know like a lot about it. Basically there's different parts to it. So there's RC classes for the British Creative Arts Project, but it can also just be like volunteers in the community. You can join the literary review board, which would mean um, every week you get writing from different people in prisons in Michigan and you, you know, you like edit them, put them together into this like literary journal. Um, volunteers can come like help. Basically what we do is we do workshops with in a, in a, in a time of not COVID we would go into different prisons in Michigan and we do workshops. There's a creative writing workshop, there's theater workshops and there's visual arts workshops. And yeah, sometimes like we do some music stuff, but you know, there's not like a separate thing. Um, and what we do is you, you have a facilitation group and you go and you do these workshops once a week. Obviously right now we are not going in we're just doing it remotely, but the class I'm taking right now is called Theater and Incarceration. And it's with Ashley Lucas, who is big in the Prison Creative Arts Project which is just, it's just so incredible because like we're, we talk with previously incarcerated people every time we meet, they come to class with us, they're like, they're in our class. And we just like, I've learned so much more about the prison system. And like, I already like know that this is like what I want to do with my life just based off this one class. And so if you're interested in any of that sort of stuff, please do the Prison Creative Arts Project. It is, and you can ask me more about it. 
Um, also, I say Spanish because the Spanish instructors are awesome, but I'm sure they all are. I just don't know the other ones. I agree. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Layla, Go ahead. Um, we're in the same class, but I would definitely say I love the RC Spanish classes. All the professors are super approachable and really nice, and they're also always willing to help you whenever you need. Um, so in response to favorite class, my favorite class, I answered this in the uh, Q&A, but I really love taking intro to poetry with Professor Laura Kaczynski. Um, Also Professor Sarah Master, she teaches an intro class to poetry as well. I think they switch every semester. I had both of them. They're both amazing, incredible people. Um, one of the most welcoming um, groups of people is the creative writing department of the RC. I'm sure Logan can attest to that as well. Um, favorite language program. I did uh, RC French, but I did experience a few, I had a few interactions with um, the RC Spanish department and at least one or two with the RC German department. Um, I also set up the coffee hours for Japanese on every Friday when, I, when we were in person. Um, so for um, the language, you are choosing a language that you're interested in, but you're also going to get a community with it. So with the Spanish, with uh, RC Spanish and RC French, they're larger, there are larger languages. So there's going to be a lot more people in it. Um, you'll meet a lot more people, a lot more students, but also there's more faculty. Um, in terms of like RC German, um, RC German, RC Russian, and RC Japanese um, are a bit smaller of co cohorts. So there will be uh, more of a, uh, a closer, it'll probably form a closer relationship with those um, faculty members. I know that, um, like for RC German, typically when we're in person, they'll be in RC German, Russian, and Japanese will be in this like smaller uh, room for their lunch tables. So they're always having conversation. Um, but it just depends on the kind of community that you want. Um, and then as you move outwards into LSA for additional language courses, um, it changes. But I like RC French, but I'm a bit biased. Um, just because I was learning French for a while. So I'm seeing a few more questions kind of on the topic of languages come up as well about how intensive are they or what will my workload be like? Just some concerns, and I'm sure all of you can relate to concerns, swirling confusion about what the language requirement is like before you join the RC. Um, I know I can relate to that from the alum perspective. So would anyone like to share kind of their perspective of what they thought it would be, what it turned out to be, or some tips if someone's joining the language requirement, maybe suggesting things about course load or maybe thinking about how to manage studying, anything like that? Um, so I, I love, I absolutely love my Spanish classes. And to me, that's really weird considering I never actually particularly enjoyed Spanish in high school. But the thing with the RC language program is that they make learning fun and you don't always notice the progress that you make, which I feel like once you do eventually realize it, it's kind of a very pleasant and surprising um, revelation. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. I saw someone like talking about worried about feeling lost. So yeah, basically like I came into my Spanish program, I hadn't taken Spanish since I'm like freshman year and like everyone I was talking to was like, yeah, I took it all throughout high school. And I was like, I'm going to be so behind like this. I'm not going to be able to do this. But just the amount of like help that is offered, like obviously it wasn't, of course I didn't want to like five hours every day, like you know, like going to like office hours. That's, that's not what I mean. Like you, it starts, you slowly, I mean, obviously it's not slow. Like it is pretty intense, but sort of like what I've doing is like working with other people really helps. And especially I'm assuming being on campus, that would be even easier. Um, but I think just if you ever feel like lost, taking advantage of office hours is really important. And I also like, I'll go to these weekly like speaking practices. Cause I'm like, okay, like my speaking needs some help. Okay. So I'll do that like for a half hour once a week with, there's just so many people who like, they offer so many opportunities. And if you take those opportunities, you're like it you're gonna be fine like I definitely was worried about feeling lost and at times yeah it's a hard class and at times I like am struggling I mean like we do with all classes but I think that it's you know there's many opportunities for help and like Penny said like you you really do improve even if you're not realizing it and so it's just I would say just trying not to get frustrated which I think I like need to take my own advice a bit because I'll be like I, sometimes you feel like you're putting an effort, the effort is paying off, especially with languages. It's kind of harder to see that progress, but it is happening. 
So I would say, yeah, it is intense and it, it does take up a lot of your time, but I think it's well worth it. Sort of just to quell the anxiety around um, uh, not really knowing anything about a language. Um, I know that in Spanish and French, and I believe German, um, uh, the winter term um, of your freshman year is what is um, many of the language professors call like the baby class, um, which, you know, debate around that name can happen. But um, those classes are tailored to true beginners. So they may go at a slower pace, but they also will provide more help um, for people who are learning things from the ground up. Um, from since I entered French um, more or less at like the proficient mark, seeing people move from their first semester of like baby, um, baby French um, to the second semester was like night and day. It was crazy just to see how much they actually did and improved. Um, and then by the next fall, I was a like a peer tutor for French and I was working with students that I had met in lunch tables and remembered like introducing myself to them and all they could do was say my name is and like I am this I'm like you know 18. So it's kind of crazy how much progress you'll make um, but it's always nice to remember that you will get out what you put in. Um, so just because you're doing stuff in class doesn't mean you shouldn't, you know, be listening to music, watching shows or movies or stuff like that on the outside too. Um, I would also, uh, I don't know if you guys know this yet, but um, the language classes are not, they're, they're graded pass fail. So what that means is that it's an eight credit class, which like, a normal college class will be like three or four credits. So eight is like a lot. It's like two classes packed into one, but um, you either pass or you fail at the end of the semester. And I don't think I've ever met another person in my program who failed the class <laughs> at any point. Um, so basically you write essays, you take exams, you do projects, presentations, you do all that stuff, the normal school stuff, and you get grades on them. Um, the professors do you know, write a numerical grade, like here's how you did, um, but that doesn't, there's no average. They don't you know, calculate out like, here's how many points because um, the way language learning works, it's not a straight trajectory. There's not like, it's not you start here and you end here, you know, and you go straight up, you know, it's, this is how my professor explained it to me in freshman year, because, you know, I hit a wall in my first semester, I was doing really, really well. And then, you know, I lost, um, I had to drop a class, I, you know, I had lost some of my work ethic and some of my motivation and a lot of freshmen go through that, you know, it's the first semester of college, it's overwhelming. Um, and my professor noticed and she said, you know, I'm here to help you and you know, let's figure this out. And, you know, I'm, I was so thankful that my grades didn't count because I wasn't doing very well, but she gave me a chance and she, uh, you know, tutored me outside of class and we worked together on the stuff that I was having trouble with. And, you know, I passed with flying colors at the end of the semester. Um, and it just goes to show that, you know, there's going to be blips on the radar. It's not going to be like a perfect upward slope. It's, you know, and that's the great thing. It's so forgiving and it's just a great learning environment. Yeah, I also think a lot of it is about sort of shifting your mindset, which has definitely been hard for me because, you know, in high school, I feel like we were always sort of taught, you know, like your goal is to get an A in this class. Your goal is to like do well in this class. When in the RC language program, your goal is to learn the language. You know, your goal is to just become better at the language. And like, like Katie said, the grades, you're not numerical grades on your listening exams or certain tests it doesn't really matter. It's just about improving and getting, learning the language. It's not about, I need to get this percent in this class because you're not going to because it's pass fail. So I think the mindset with this has to just be like, I'm working towards proficiency. I'm working towards learning this language. That's my goal. Because if your goal is to like, you're not going to ace all the, like, you're not going to do well on like the first few tests. You're just like not like, because you don't know like the way that they like want to do the listening exams. And it's like, you know, you slowly get used to it. And so I think just having the mindset of like, I just am learning the language is really helpful. 
And in addition to the classes being pass fail, and this part is true for all RC classes, the professors will leave around like one paragraph or so um, on your transcript. And so when you do send your transcript to grad schools or employers, they'll see it. And if you do do well in that class, it's like a mini um, letter of recommendation. And so even though the um, RC language classes are pass fail, in that paragraph, your professors will most likely highlight on the process, like the progress that you've made throughout the semester. And at least to me, I think that's more important than a letter grade. I think you touched on a really strong point about how the RC students may appear different at the end of graduation, having those narrative evaluations on their transcript, for many of them listing that they're proficient in a particular language. So RC students will have that different experience with some of that more one-on-one -on -one connection, more of those resources, and you'll have a record for that too, which is really helpful. Um, and I wanna to touch on a couple more questions. I know we're getting close to time and I appreciate everybody sharing these. These are all great. Uh, so one was asked for those who have lived in East Quad, what is it like in terms of, is it loud? What is it like rooming by others? So if maybe one person could answer that quick. And then we have another question about the arts courses. Um, living in East Quad, I thought it was like great. Um, it was also my first time living in dorms. Uh, I roomed randomly and I was very lucky that my roommate and everyone in our hall was very friendly. Uh, we actually, we, um, we mo like, we would just like visit each other throughout the week and be like, oh, I need this or whatever, because especially since we're all in like s s the intense languages together. Um, a lot of we like a lot of them study together so I know my roommate um, did study with other people like because it was much easier right in person yeah um, so yeah that's my thing on Discord. Thank you and we did have a question about just elaborate more about the arts courses so just really quick I mentioned before that uh, art practicum requirement, how that overlaps with the LSA's creative expression. Has anyone here taken a course that fulfilled that requirement? Just raise your hand. Okay, so good number of you have. Um, and I know there's a lot of unusual ways you can fulfill this where students don't always realize. Things like the Michigan Marching Band or Glee Club, there's a lot of those that help fulfill it. RC courses, LSA courses. Uh, would a couple of people just like to mention what they did to fulfill it? Yeah, so my PCAP class, the Prison Creative Art Project, is fulfilling, I mean, I don't exactly know, but it, it can fulfill my creative thing, my um, one of my humanities credits, my race and ethnicity um, credit. So there's so many classes. You're not taking one class for like every single little requirement. And like, I know I was definitely overwhelmed, but the like you just kind of like, that was weird. You, like one class counts for many things. And so, you know, like don't kind of, and think of, like think about it this way, like everyone gets this done. You know, it's not like you're gonna be the one person who doesn't get your credits done. They get done. They really do. And you know, there's double majors and there's minors and people get them done. It's just a matter of, you know, like how you choose to do it. So that was mine. I am oh, sorry. Go ahead. You can you can go. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm in the women's glee club, which is outside the RC. It was the first org that I joined outside of the residential college and it was the best decision such a great group um and i currently hold a leadership position with them so that's like my um art practicum for lsa but uh i do love to sing and i also took rc hums 254 i think which was um, a vocal arts class and i learned how to sing classical art song and a little bit of opera and it was really fun and i loved it Yeah, so I went the more like traditional art route. Um, so RC, like they have four, I think four studios in the basement of East Quad. Um, and so there's a sculpture studio, a ceramic studio, sorry, a ceramic studio, a photography studio and a printmaking studio. Um, and so they also offer like different classes because I know um, the person who teaches the printmaking studio at one point like taught a book making class too which sounds really interesting I didn't take it but like so um yeah so I've like taken ceramics furniture sculpture there's like basically there's so many options like you don't even have to travel north uh, to north campus you literally just go downstairs and you have access to a studio that has amazing stuff in it so yeah thank you all 
I want to jump in and answer a couple questions about admissions that have been coming through. So we've got a couple questions that are things like I'm waiting to hear back about all my financial aid or scholarship packages, so I'm not quite ready to commit to Michigan, or I'm really excited about the RC, do I need to commit now? When is the point where things might start to fill up? So I'll give kind of a big explainer for all of that. So right now, if you have any interest whatsoever in the ARC, I recommend confirming your interest. So you do that by responding to an email you would have received from me, which would have said, please confirm your interest here, or you can fill out a form on the ARC website to join the ARC. And I'll also drop my email here in the chat. You can email me directly and I'll help make sure you get those links. Any interest at all, go ahead and confirm your RC because it's non-binding. It doesn't commit you to Michigan and you can remove that later if you decide the RC is not the best fit for you. So that's no problem. And the RC won't actually start to give away spots for the incoming class until after March 1st. So if you know for sure you wanna to come to Michigan, you know for sure you wanna be in the RC, you're welcome to go ahead and pay your deposit now. Uh, but on our end, that won't actually secure you a spot until March 1st. At that point, you would be first in line, so you'd hear back from me very quickly. Um, but if you're worried about when's that time where things might start to fill, right around mid-April is where that can happen. Each year varies quite a bit. But I always say reach out if you're concerned. I'm very transparent. So if you're just wondering, hey, has a wait list started? Are you getting close? Send me an email, give me a call, and I'll let you know where you stand in that process. And let me drop my email here quick in the chat. And I know I saw a question a little bit earlier asking about what is the vibe of the RC. So as we're getting close to time, uh, would anyone like to share what the vibe is in the RC to them or advice for anyone about considering joining the RC or not joining the RC? We'll go ahead and start. Um, so the vibe of the RC, um, that's a great question. We get it all the time, just about like what are students like, what are the people like? Um, like we've kind of said the theme so far is it is what you make of it. You will make friends if you put yourself out there. Um, what you'll find a lot uh, during freshman year is a lot of opportunities, a lot of events to go to, to meet people. Make sure you participate in those because people are all looking for friends. You're all gonna be in the same boat. Um, you know, If we are in person in the fall, hopefully we are. Um, uh, but I'm sure um, uh, like Pinyi and Laya can talk about what it's been like to meet people um, virtually as well. But yeah, just um, the vibe would be community um, friendly, very open, very um, open minded as well. Um, those are the qualities that I've seen so far. Yeah, I just want to, I've made in the art already I haven't even met Penny but was in our Spanish class so we like it's like that um but yeah so I would say there isn't like a specific I, I think I think a lot of time oh sorry am I cutting out a little bit <laughs> okay Okay, I'll go fast. Um, I don't think there is a specific vibe in RC. I think that there are so many different people in the RC. I've met complete, I've met completely different types of people, but like we all, I think they're really the RC kind of is a place for everyone. It's not just for people who like want to like major in a language. It's not just for people who do like a certain theater or something. So I just think the vibe is really like whatever. I mean, whatever you bring, that's the vibe. It's not really like there is a specific vibe. And I think making friends with COVID definitely has been harder, but like the clo the RC classes has helped me so much because like in my big LSA classes, you know, I don't really like meet a lot of those people with, in those big asynchronous lectures, but in like my small RC classes, I've met a lot of friends. And so the RC definitely helps you make friend makes friends a lot. Okay. Oh, go right ahead. Yeah, uh, I was just going to say, um, to add on to Layla's answer, there definitely is no cookie cutter definition of what an RC student looks like. But I will say that the RC students are some of the most open minded, welcoming and nicest people I've ever met. And they're always so easy to talk to. Like, I'm literally 7500 miles away from East Quad. And I, I I've still made friends. Um, Layla and I are pretty close. And I've just never met her in person. Um, so it'll be nice to meet them finally in August, but as of right now, it doesn't feel like, you know, the connection is weaker or anything just because we're virtual. That is a great note to end things on too. 
Um, thank you everyone who came here today. Uh, I hope we answered all of your questions. I really appreciate all of you sharing those in the chat. They're all great. They focus on a lot of the concerns that come up for students every year when they're considering the RC. So you are in good company. A lot of these students here had the same questions on their minds as well. And I've dropped my email a couple times. Feel free to reach out to me directly. I really encourage it. And also the students you're chatting with here have their bios on the RC website. So you can reach out to them as well. They have their emails listed there if you just want to know a little bit more and keep talking to someone who knows what the RC experience is like. Uh, so I will wrap things up now. And just again, congratulations for everyone who's been admitted to U of M. We really hope to see you here in the fall and in the RC. Reach out if you have any questions and go blue. Go blue. <laughs> All right, I gotta head out for an office hours. Bye, guys. <laughs> I as well have to go. <laughs> I have a. Bye, guys. Yep, you're bye. all good to log off. Go blue.